purple tunnel, macular degeneration, social isolation, an excellent salary, and back problems. If that sounds good to you, might I recommend a career in programming, but how does one actually learn to code as a complete beginner? Well, the answer is actually very simple. You need to spend countless hours staring at the blue light of a computer screen, hitting the keys until something cool comes out the other side. Learning to code was by far the best investment I ever made in my career, and it cost approximately zero dollars thanks to all the free stuff on the internet. Luckily, you don't need to be very smart, but you do need to work hard and put in the hours required to learn the actual skill. But hours doing what exactly? Where do I even start? Sadly, there is no guaranteed step-by-step -step program. Every true coder will need to go on their own quest and slay their own dragons. In this video, we'll create seven different roadmaps to give you a rough idea of where to start depending on what it is you actually want to do with code. It's critical that you find a project that burns a fire in your loins, something to anchor you through the extremely frustrating process of learning a new skill. For me, that project was a website over 10 years ago, but nowadays you can do way cooler stuff, like build games, IoT IoT devices, web, mobile, and desktop apps, machine learning and data analysis, or code up your own low-level systems. If I had to learn to code from scratch today, here's how I would plan it out. Let's start by going down the web development path. Maybe your goal is to build the next Twitter. Web development might be the hardest path, because there are many different cats and many ways to skin them. But in a nutshell, here's what you gotta do. Download an editor like VS Code, create an HTML file, and learn how the structure of a website works. Now create a CSS file and try to make that structure look good, with some custom styling. Next, you'll need to learn some JavaScript to make the website interactive. The crazy thing, though, is that most people don't use JavaScript by itself, but instead bring in a front-end framework to build out a UI. If your goal is to get a job, learn React because it's the most popular, but if you want to enjoy yourself, you might look into Svelte or Vue instead. That takes care of the front-end, but to build an app, you also need a back-end. The easiest way to do that is to bring in a back-end as a service, like Firebase, Pocketbase, or Supabase. That'll give you user authentication, a database, and file uploads with minimal effort, but you'll also likely need your own custom server-side code. And confusingly, the easiest way to do that is with a serverless platform. You'll need to learn some Node.js and understand how HTTP and APIs work on the internet. And then finally, you can bring in a meta framework that matches up to your front-end framework, like Next.js, SvelteKit, or Nuxt, which can put everything you need together in one cohesive package. And with that, we have a very rough roadmap for web development. But there's about a million different side quests you could go on along the way. You could also tear up this roadmap and go use something like Java and Spring Boot, Ruby on Rails, or Laravel and PHP, because virtually every programming language out there can also build web apps. Web development is more complex than any one person's comprehension. Try not to get too distracted by hype. Figure out a framework you love, get involved in its community, and learn the tools that orbit around it. Also, you could follow this roadmap step by step, or there's nothing wrong jumping straight into a framework and trying to learn the necessary pieces as you go. In fact, I kind of prefer the latter chaotic approach myself. The web is the ultimate platform, but some applications are just better suited for mobile. If you want to build a mobile app on iOS or Android, you can build the highest quality app by learning learning how to use their dedicated tool chains. On iOS, that means you'll need to own a Mac and download the Xcode IDE, then learn the Swift programming language. On Android, you download Android Studio, then learn Java or the Kotlin programming language. Most mobile apps also need a backend, and tools like Firebase or AWS Amplify are a great place to start learning. Compared to web development, the path forward here is far less windy. However, it's still not easy, and if you want to build an app for both iOS and Android, you'll have to learn two entirely different languages and platforms. As an alternative, you could learn a cross-platform framework, such as Flutter with the Dart programming language, React Native with JavaScript, or Microsoft's .NET framework with C Sharp to build apps for both iOS and Android from a single code base. Although maybe you don't want a mobile app, but rather a desktop app. Like you can build Mac OS apps with Swift, although you can also use Swift to build Windows apps. At the same time, you can use .NET to build Windows apps, and also .NET MAUI to build Mac OS apps. Or maybe you want to build Linux apps. For that, there's a toolkit called GTK that can build native Linux apps in a variety of different languages. Languages. Or maybe you want to target all three at the same time. Frameworks like Electron and Tauri allow you to build desktop apps using JavaScript that run on any platform. If you already know some web development, these can be awesome tools. But if you're starting from scratch, you likely want to choose the platform you're most comfortable with and start by building apps for that platform with its preferred toolchain. What's depressing about app development, though, is that it can sometimes feel like we're building nothing in an infinite void, just vaporware that will never feel the touch of a real human. But another path you might take is hardware. Maybe you want to build an IO device, a robot, or a flamethrower synchronized to your guitar plane.
for this path, you can start building things with a Raspberry Pi. It's just a tiny computer where you can start learning the basics of the Linux operating system. Once you have it up and running, you can then start learning the Python programming language. Python is the most popular language for beginners because it's easy to learn and can do almost anything. On a Raspberry Pi, you can connect a breadboard to build circuits, then control their behavior with your Python code. Or another option is to buy an Arduino, which has a microcontroller that can be programmed with its own C-like language. Along the way, there's a ton to learn about circuitry and networking before you eventually connect your IoT device to the cloud. At that point, you'll need to learn some back-end development and protocols like MQTT to pass messages between your devices. Another great place to start learning to code is by building a game. Modern frameworks like Unity and Godot make it possible for the average person to develop an awesome game independently. Both frameworks provide an integrated development environment where you can drag and drop different game elements, then change their behavior with code. Both game engines are based on the c -sharp programming language, but Godot also has its own purpose-built language that's a little easier for beginners. Either way, there's a lot to learn about game physics, in addition to 3D modeling, with topics like shaders, meshes, ray tracing, and so on. Luckily, almost everything you need to learn is contained within the game engine, but there's also a huge ecosystem of third-party assets that you can implement in your own code so you're not doing everything from scratch. As you gain more experience, you might then check out Unreal Engine, which is based on the C++ language. It's more challenging as a beginner, but is the engine of choice for many top-tier AAA games. One of the most exciting fields to get into right now, though, is machine learning, where you can build artificial intelligence to make yourself obsolete. Machine learning is tricky because you can't just make it happen out of thin air. You need to have a whole bunch of data first. In my opinion, the best way to get started is to participate in data science competitions on Kaggle. Here you can obtain real-world data and analyze it with a community of other data scientists. And if you're really good at it, you can actually win a lot of money. Before you get to that point, though, you'll need to learn a language designed for scientific computing. The most common options are Julia, R, and of course Python. If you go the Python route, you'll first want to learn libraries like Pandas to organize your data, Matplotlib to visually analyze the data, and Scikit-Learn to start running some basic machine learning algorithms on it. Along the way, you'll need to learn a lot about math because machine learning is just a fancy way of doing statistics. Once you have the basics down, you can then move into deep neural networks with libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch, which are the tools used to build the most terrifying modern day AI applications. The final way you might learn to code is by going straight into systems engineering. When you go to prison, the best way to survive is to find the biggest guy in there and knock him or her out on your first day. You can take a similar approach when learning to code by immediately starting with the C programming language. You see, C is the language used to build almost everything else, like the Mac, Windows, and Linux operating system kernels and the Python interpreter itself. Surprisingly though, C is actually a pretty easy language to get started with. It's just missing a lot of other data structures, like a list or dictionary that you might take for granted in Python. That means you'll have to implement your own stuff from scratch. You need to understand how low-level memory management works and how to implement algorithms that most people only study just to survive an interview. It's a trial by fire that will make you the most badass mother in prison. In reality, if you go this route, you'll most likely just get your ass kicked, but I think every developer should try out prison just a little bit. It'll make you a stronger, humble, and more well-rounded developer, no matter what you're trying to code. And if you really do enjoy systems engineering, you might learn a language like Rust or C++ if you're a masochist. And with that, we have seven basic roadmaps that you might use to learn to code in 2023. But we've barely scratched the surface here. There are other skills that are universal to almost every one of these paths, like you'll want to learn Git and GitHub to version control your software. You'll need to learn Linux and the Bash language for shell scripting. You should know a thing or two about networking, like how HTTP and DNS work, and how APIs are built on top of them with standards like REST, RPC, and GraphQL. Truth be told, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. I've crammed so much stuff into my brain that whenever I learn something new, something falls out on the other side. It's normal to feel overwhelmed when learning to code. What you want to do is try to get really good at one thing, like become a top 10% expert in that field. It may take years to get there, but if you do it, you'll likely have an awesome job for the rest of your life. Learning to code is a lifelong journey. There's no final destination, and it can be extremely frustrating and painful. But the reward for suffering is experience. And experience is what makes you money. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.